Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Class from 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, May the 11th, 2013. My name is Lorna Costantini, and I'm joined today with Peggy Moore. Peggy Moore, got that good. Good start. Peggy George, along with Tammy Moore and Lori Moffitt, as we welcome our guest today, Angela Mayers, and her topic is Quest to Matter. Wonderful to have you with us, Angela. It's both awesome of you are yes. Thanks, Angela. For those of you who are new to our session, I'd just let you know that we do have a live binder and Peggy George is in our chat always sending all the links and she's just dropped that link into our live binder where you'll find a link to all the sessions resources that Angela is sharing with us today. And just as a heads up, if we have links that are shared during the session that are um, a compliment to today's uh, presentation, we will also add that to the live binder. And as well as that resource, we have, of course, our own website, live.classroom20.com. We always point you to the archives and resources page, which you're going to find not only the full Blackboard Collaborate link, and pardon me, I'm losing my voice. Hang on just a second. Thank you. You'll also find uh, an MP3 file, uh, embedded uh, video file, and wonderful, a copy of the chat log. So don't worry if you miss a link or something that's going on to the session. We do post it there on our blog. And on the blog, you're also going to find all the links that we uh, share as well for the day. So please refer back to it and uh, enjoy the, the sessions and refer to any of your colleagues who might have missed today's show. So I said to a few of you who were here earlier, I'm going to make you work, so I need you to go to the whiteboard tools to the left of the whiteboard, choose that laser pointer, the second option down, and drag it across the world to show us where you are located. And if I always say, if that's not working, please drop it in the chat, and you might want to do that anyway, because I don't always pick the right spots for people. So it's just a little fun to see. Um, our wide-reaching audience, that it's global and it's great to have people here today joining us with Angela. Okay, great. Let's quickly move on to some poll questions. And I said we make you work hard in this session. So underneath your name, the right-hand icon is a little check mark. Click on it. And please answer today our first question. Are you familiar with You Matter? and choose to matter. So yes, if you are, and no, if you're not, then I'll give everyone a few minutes here to cast their voice, vote, excuse me, and uh, we'll see the responses. And it'll help uh, Angela uh, frame her presentation with your responses. OK, I'm going to publish them to the whiteboard. And there we go. Well, you see, Angela, we, we've got a, kind of a split here. Some of us just haven't been able to vote, and then it's 30, 25 uh, as a result. So thanks very much for that poll question. And we're going to move on to the next poll question is, have you done a You Matter or Choose to Matter project? Still waiting for the votes here. OK, let's see what the results are so far. I think we've got most people voting. And I saw a, a large number have not done so. So uh, that's going to be great information to share with you. Let's go on to our next poll question. And is, are you familiar with Quest to Matter? That's an even tougher one, because that's our day's that's today's presentation. So yes, if you are, no, if you are not. Let's see how the votes go. And a few more people have heard of Quest to Matter, and it's kind of interesting. And uh, I know that you're going to enjoy uh, the answer to our newbie question in a minute as uh, Angela starts her presentation. So thanks, everybody, for voting. I am now going to move on to formally introducing Angela to you. For most people on the session, I'm sure you know who she is, but people who listen to the recording might like to know that uh, she's an award-winning educator, speaker, 
consultant and the chief instigator of Dreaming Big and Igniting Change at Choose to Matter. She's at the forefront of new literacy and Web 2.0 technology and is known for her work in literacy, leadership, and global communications. She's an active blogger and social media evangelist. Evangelist, having trouble this morning. Hang on. She deeply, she's deeply committed to helping learners of all ages understand the transformational power and potential of technology as a vehicle and platform platform for their success in school and beyond. Her latest books, The Habitudes and The Passion Driven Classroom, have inspired readers everywhere with lessons and ideas necessary to find their way on the social web and this newly flattened world. Angela, it's my opportunity to welcome you on behalf of Classroom 2.0 Live. I know that uh, you're going to expand that uh, introduction with some more information about yourself. And we always challenge you with the newbie question, which is today, what is Choose to Matter, and you matter, and how do they relate to being a genius? It's an interesting approach, and let's welcome Angela Mayers to our session today. Hi, Angela. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to see you here, and I really, really, really appreciate. I know how precious Saturdays are, and I promise every minute we're together is going to matter. One of my friends and mentors who guided me in the last several years is Seth Godin, and his tweet this morning, ironically or, or apropos, is the question isn't whether you or we will succeed. The question is whether we will matter. And that's our overarching question today in education, really, is that, that choose to matter, this contest, if you will, the world does win because we're pursuing this question. What does it mean when we know that we matter and that our actions count? And if every individual, because in the 21st century, the smartest person in the room is the room. And so imagine in every room that we're in, whether it's a room of five-year-olds or it's a room of, of bigger than five-year-olds, if every single individual in that room made the choice to matter, they believed and owned their genius, and they felt the responsibility and obligation to leverage that genius with every genius present in that room, just imagine what our world would be like. And for the last year and a half, I've been able to give you a little peek into what a world like that looks like. And that's really the impetus for this whole movement, is that the first step in a world like that is understanding and sharing these words with one another. And my, my proclamation about a year and a half ago was that if people knew they mattered, that the world would be very different. It would change someone's mood when you say you matter to them. It changes their mood. It might put a smile on their face. It changes their heart because they're in a different place where they interact with other people. And I believe if we really understood the DNA level necessity for us to understand that mattering is not something that's nice for us to have, not a luxury, it's an absolute essential, like food and water and shelter. When we know we matter, we are fully alive. And that's what Seth Godin is talking about. We are not fully alive until we understand that we are significant. And every single one of you in this room is significant, not just to your kids, not just to our community, but to the world. And so you matter has become a call to action. It is not a strategy, a program that we do, an event that we have in school where we put you matter signs up and then the next day we act as if we don't matter. It is a choice. It's a choice with every breath. It's a choice with every, every interaction. It's a choice with every tweet. And it's those small choices that we make every day that actually can be leveraged and scale the world. And I have been asking kids throughout the year to make public what it takes to make that choice every day. And so some of you know that I call these habitudes. So that every time we make the choice to risk with one another, every time we make the choice to learn not only with each other but for each other, the choice to collaborate in an empathetic way, the choice to wonder and, and, and dream audaciously, um, and the choice to do really hard things that other people aren't willing to do, to act on things that we, are, we should be acting on and not wait for someone else, then miraculous things happen. So many of you are in the room and have been participating in Genius Hour. So um, a few years ago, I looked at what would that infrastructure look like where 
we were making a conscious choice to matter to the world, not just to each other. And I looked at Google's model of 20% time, and I wrote a book called Passion Driven Education, and looked at what does that look like in a day-to-day bell-to-bell schedule if we built in the choice to share our genius together. And what would those passion projects look like? And then with dialogue with amazing educators like Denise Krebs and Joy Kerr and all the Genius Hour leaders right now, we thought, well, this is about genius, so we're just going to call this Genius Hour. And so once a week, schools all over the country, all over the globe, have been meeting, and this is the structure that we've been working through. They make their genius public. They own their genius. This is what my genius is. This is how I am going to contribute. And most importantly, this is what you can count on from me. Because I don't need to know that you're a third grader. I don't need to know that you're a curriculum director. I don't need to know that you're a superintendent. I need to know what your genius is and how we can count on it and use this to move forward the work that we have together. So in the, in the business world, this is called personal branding. In the world of school, this is called owning your genius. So we make our genius public so we know who's in our presence. We are in the presence of genius every day. And knowing who that is so I can say, oh my gosh, I need to go to Peggy. This is her genius. I need to go to Laura. She's, this is her genius. If you don't know and we hide that, no one wins. And then we ask ourselves this question. What matters to you? What matters to us? So if you say that animals matter to us, or you say that human rights matter, you say that education matters, it's not enough just to stay there and pursue what you like about that topic. That's called a hobby. <laughs> and I learned that as we were talking about these passion projects, is that kids were pursuing hobbies. Well, I like cars. I like dogs. I like, you know, airplanes. That's great. But this is the question that demands your genius. What breaks your heart? about that in the world? What breaks your heart about that in the world? So I shared a technique that I called heart mapping, which helped you sort of, ha- sort of get to, in a strategic way, what's in your heart, what matters to you. The second part of that is called heartbreak mapping. So when we map our heartbreak, when we follow what breaks our heart, it's a much more truer north to get to really passion-driven work because it demands our habitude. It demands our genius. So a really simple example, um, Mark, my, my, my partner in crime who's in here finding Dulcinea, Mark Moran, his daughter was with preschool students, and when she asked them what matters in the world, they said, oops, sorry, they said, well, animals matter to us. And so they were talking, well, what, um, what, what, breaks, you know, what breaks your heart about animals? Well, some animals are misunderstood, like spiders. People think spiders are really bad, and they're really not, and so they started pursuing research on spiders, and then um, every, I don't know if it's every day or every week, they go out at recess as geniuses, and they try to protect spiders. Now, that's not changing the world, but that's changing the stance of the citizens we're creating for the world, citizens that do not tolerate apathy, do not comply, do not sit around and say, it's someone else's job to take care of that. Our youngest citizens are saying, that is not okay in the world, and we must act on that. Another simultaneous story is I was with a group of third graders, or grade three students, and they said, well, education matters. And I said, well, what part of education matters? Well, they said, you know, we get to learn to read and write in school. And I said, well, that's awesome. That should fill your heart. And I said, well, what's exciting about that? Well, we get to read chapter books, and we get to go to the library, and we feel so smart. And I said, well, you know what? Let me tell you something that will break your heart. There are other eight-year-olds in the world that absolutely don't know what you're talking about. They've never felt that joy because they don't have libraries. They don't have books. They've never seen a book. And these kids were like, well, that is not okay. That is, that is absolutely unacceptable. We have to change that. We have to act on that right now. And by recess, which was four minutes later, they began that action. They rallied enough money to, and they make, make their proclamation. I'll come back to that. They rallied enough money, and you can see them in the bottom right-hand corner, and they built a library in another country. And they got to chronicle through my blog and through Skype the entire process of building the library. They got to change these kids' lives because of the actions they took of not tolerating an injustice like 
not every child being able to have a library. When we make our proclamations, how we're going to choose to matter public, it holds us accountable and our community accountable. So the process of changing the world looks like this. What, what is your genius? What is it you were born with or born to do because you were born to make an impact? And you knew that at three, and you knew that at five, and somewhere between five, between sort of preschool and grad school, you forgot, and your genius is somewhere lying dormant. So what matters to you? How do you want to use your genius towards that? So you, you decide. And I guarantee there are other people in the world that that same thing matters to. There's got to be people in the world that believe spiders are the most misunderstood insect or animal. <laughs> then map your heartbreak. What breaks your heart about that? And how will you not only choose to matter, but how will you, by making it public, rally your community around that cause? Because everyone in your community doesn't have to feel passionate about that topic, but they are passionate about being essential. So when I look at you and say, I need you, I need your genius, I could not do this without you, that is the most motivating thing you can say to a human being. You say to them, not only do I think you're awesome, not only do I think you're important, I believe you are essential. Kids don't want to be needy. They want to be needed. And Choose to Matter gives them a reason beyond any scope of any individual school or any individual education system because the world is saying to them, we need your contribution. We need your fearlessness. We need your boldness. We need your imagination. We need your ability to rally your communities. And guess what? Kids step up. And they have stepped up in groves. We have hundreds of Genius Hour projects that have been contributed already. So what Choose to Matter and the Quest to Matter seeks to do is be the aggregator of all of those projects. Projects that you're doing already, projects that your students have been doing, ideas, bold, audacious ideas that they have that aren't completed to change the world. What we're asking in Choose to Matter is that you put them on the Quest site for two reasons. The first is for aggregation, for leveraging collective genius. Because what I found, and what I know that you know, is that people are doing extraordinary world-changing things, and they're doing it alone, and they're doing it in isolation. So I don't know that there's another group around the world trying to fight spiders or trying to fight world hunger. But if I knew all the actions being taken in our schools and ultimately in the world, wow, can you imagine what we could do as a force? So when you click on animal welfare, you would get to see all the actions being taken in that cause towards that problem and work together as a community to leverage heartbreak. You would also get to see what the challenges are with an individual group working toward that. So the challenge for the library group is that they did extraordinary work. They built an entire library with their little eighth grade hearts or eight-year-old hearts. But because of the larger world community in my network, as I blogged about all of these projects, they would scale to a massive world level within seconds on the social web because there was somebody in my network who owned a lumber yard who donated a heck of a lot of lumber, and now five libraries are being built. So every single project that I blogged about, that I tweeted about, that I shared, because of the world network scale, our schools and our kids cannot do it without the world network taking seriously their contributions. So to join the quest isn't, I'm sorry, to join the quest isn't a cute contest for your kids. It really is a contest where the world wins because every contribution at whatever level is going to matter. At the very minimum, it is going to change the world's hearts and perceptions about this force of, force of citizens that are coming into it. We do not have a talent crisis. We do not have an innovation shortage. We do not have a lack of genius. They're just six and seven and eight, and the world has not yet met them. So this site that I've envisioned for the last year and a half, this home for our students' genius, is quite expensive. 
and I have a job and don't have time to raise money. So the world believed so much in the potential of our kids that the largest coding community in the, in the world, uh, a community called Top Coder, where they pull coders that built Facebook and coders that built the web as you know it, they have stepped up and they've built this space to solve this problem, the world not knowing what our kids' genius is. And so all I'm asking from educators is that they show kids there is a place to host and to leverage their genius. The world is taking very seriously, very seriously our kids' contribution. They do not say, oh, you're six, or oh, you're eight, or oh, you're grade three. They say, this is a flipping good idea, and we need to get behind it. And so the Quest to Matter follows the same sequence as Genius Hour. When you contribute your students either ideas they've been working on, solutions to problems that they've already been investigating, beautiful things that the world needs to know about our kids, it goes through the same process. What matters to you? What breaks your heart about that? Let's act together. Let's change our world. Recognizing that we are asking kids from kindergarten all the way to college to contribute their genius. We have three different mechanisms depending, and, and you're the front line. So you can join the quest based on, sorry, based on what you know about your kids and their needs. So if you do not want an individual child submitting their genius idea to the social web, and you would rather do it as a class, like the class I just shared with you, grade eight or grade three kids, Kid Blogs is our partner, and they will showcase and usher the contributions and keep your entire class identity protected. So we will never know the kids' names. We will only know of the contribution as grade one or grade five or grade seven or whatever it is. So Kid Blogs will host the whole class contribution. So if you click, it will go to Kid Blogs, and there's a landing page for Choose to Matter. If your students are between five and 14 years old, and you want their names to be known. So if you said, well, Abby Myers is eight years old, and she has a genius idea, and I need her to share that openly with the community and to own her genius, but I don't want her to share it with the world community. I only want her to share it with other five to 14-year-olds. Your sphere has built an, an entire password-protected community for five and 14-year-olds. So Kid Blogs isn't really a community. It's really a, a class identity where classrooms can share and comment on blogs. But if you have individual kids or your school as well, this is a community where you can leverage and share the projects where you would actually know the kids' names. You would say, well, that's Mark Moran, and he's 13, and I want him to connect to Abby Myers, and she's 13. None of that would be public. We will be pulling the content from your sphere and presenting it on the main site. If you don't need to worry about student identity or classroom identity, then just have your kids su submit right to the top coder site if they're 15 and above. So there's three different ways. The key is we need to leave no genius behind. We are not going to um, worry or, or we're not going to not protect kids' identity, kids' grade level, but their genius is absolutely equally needed. We need five-year-old ideas and we need 15-year-old ideas. So there's three different structures in which you can contribute. And then once all the quests are contributed, we will be taking quests and ideas to solve problems till June 7th. Rather than giving students money and, you know, silly badges or recognition within the education community, we wanted to give them world recognition. So there will be a student selected out of the Quest contributions, any age, any platform, any grade, that will be um, judged by a community and be nominated and selected for the Education's Most Elite Award, Awards, which is the BAMI Awards. The BAMIs will craft an entire part of the ceremony and will make and create the first ever BAMI given to a child. And I'm really honored to have them and the BAM Network as our partner. To honor the kinds of innovations and projects the kids will contribute that the world really does need beyond just the individual, one of the most elite innovation networks in the world that 
everything that we know the world to be, from the CEO of Zappos to the CEO of Fast Company to the CEO of, of um, uh, Inc. to the head of individuals who create things like zip cars and Google Glasses. There is a network of innovators of over 5,000, but there's over 400 of the business of, of this innovation community. And they have offered on two levels to partner with Choose to Matter. They are going to act like a giant real-time shark tank, and they will be sorting and selecting and choosing the top innovative ideas, and they will work with members of the business innovation community to look at scale of those members. And then they will select the top innovative idea and the students who, or the classroom who created that, and they will be invited and flown to Rhode Island and stand on a very prestigious this stage to be honored as Innovator of the Year. So as Tony took on Zappos and became the, the youngest CEO of a billion dollar company, we have a third grader or a sixth grader or a second grader that will stand right next to individuals like that and say, I changed the world and here's how. So the recognition part is really beautiful, but the game changing part is that the innovation community and the talent community, the world and workforce community, has agreed to live mentor our students via Twitter across the quest. And, and to not only say, I recognize and value you, not as a cute kid that did a project, but it is our responsibility to usher in the next generation of leaders. And I, I don't even have words to say how proud and excited I am to have the world and workforce community stand behind the genius of our children. So I'm going to be quiet right now and I'm going to let you digest that and, and answer or ask any questions that you have about the, the details of participation. I just wanted to give you an overview of how really we can scale mattering in our schools. So anybody, I'm going to look at the chat, Mark's in the chat so he can answer. So. What do you think, you guys? Are you going to change the world with us? You better say yes. You better say yes. <laughs> I'm, feel free to take the mic. Anybody take the mic. I quickly saw a question there for you about uh, talking about the details of the student internship there. Um, Um, on top of this, this is just general, every genius kid that you know in your school that's done something, we need their contribution. There is a separate component part that we call our dream team. So we have been recruiting and, and asking for your top most genius learners. And they are not participating in the quest. So their, their, um, their project can't be submitted because it's a conflict of interest but they are going to help run the quest. So these are 60, about 60 kids we have right now in five different continents. I'm trying to see if we have a picture of our dream team. I don't think we do. Um, in five different continents that have joined forces. They've been divided into four different groups or five different groups, and they will be live, they're live mentored and apprenticed by the leaders in the business innovation. So we have a group of storytellers we have a group of um, videographer and media, like uh, I think it's called the creative team. We have a social media team. We have a judging team that will work with the BAMIs. Um, we have, and so the heads of all those teams are, so the sort of ROI for a high school kid or a middle school kid that says, I, I can't participate in the quest, but I'm going to be a part of your dream team changing the world. We've got kids from the Flat Classroom Project. Um, and those, you know, 50 to 60 kids, we will be working side by side every week, every day. Their facilitators, their um, real world mentors will be training and guiding them to help run the quest, to help sort and sift and, and, and tell the story of our student genius. I forgot to say my other partner, oops, is the Huffington Post. And so we are going to be able to run and highlight all the work that schools and teachers are doing on the Huffington Post. So we'll be running the quest via the Huffington Post. So um, we are launching this with a live show with our partners next week in New York as a part of Ariana Huffington's Game Changing Tech series. So she's launching what are game changing things happening in tech. 
I would say this is a game changing thing happening in tech. So um, the, the whole goal is to absolutely tell the story. So if you think of Choose to Matter as not only the aggregator of your students' innovative ideas, we are the ambassador to your story, to what you're doing every day, to what your kids are doing every day, to tell the world, calm down, look at this next generation. They are generation genius. And we are doing right in education. And we are nurturing this genius. And we are not going to let you down. You have not seen a world force like this ever in the history of mankind. You just don't quite know it yet. So we are your official storytellers of your genius and the work that you're doing. And so your stories and your support are of utmost importance because we get to see this every day, but the world and workforce doesn't get to see what teachers do every day. So any, so. And so I'm just going to suggest that you go ahead. There, there is a, a long stream of questions there. So I thought maybe just unless you want to do it now, we can. No. But maybe you'd like to finish your presentation, then we'll t let Lori take them all for you. OK. So sorry, this is the finish of my presentation. I'm asking you this not as um, a support to me. I'm asking because I absolutely believe this is our our, our core responsibility as educators. As Seth said, this is not about making kids successful. This is about showing kids their significance, that they have a role to play as not only a learner in your classroom, they have a role to play as a citizen of the world. The world that we're ushering into, the world that will be theirs, is a world they will be demanded to create, and they will be asked to lead in. And if they don't believe that the work that we're doing is, is demanding enough of their genius. Their genius is not going to show up. And we have an obligation as individuals and as a group to absolutely contribute our genius. So we need your help. Obviously, I, I cannot keep up with all of this. I actually have a job and two teenagers and three dogs and a roommate. So my husband is about to kill me. So I absolutely need your help. And I haven't up until this point known how to ask the help from our community because I've been so busy trying to get this space built for us, for our kids, for you. And now we're at a place of I don't know what to do to spread this to get as many contributions as we can. We have zero money. So um, the kids um, made the 60 Genius Hour kids made a video. And I think it's brilliant. They actually made 27 videos. So we had to cut them down to one, a two-minute video explaining what the quest was, how the world um, will benefit from the quest. And they are asking the community, the world community, not necessarily you, for $1 to $5. And we haven't had very much luck in that spreading. I really believe the more that we can raise for the movement in our community, the more we do not have to get sponsorship from any big companies because we've had every big company saying they'll build this space for us, but they will also own the movement, and they will also define for us what's best for kids, and we know how that works. So with every fiber of my being, I'm going to try not to let that happen. This is our kids. This is our community. This is our genius, and everything we do is a we. And I don't want any brands or any business dictating how we need to act. So if we can just share the video of the kids and ask our community for $1 to $5, whoever that is, your, it's a cup of coffee, you guys. But if we look at the, the power of our community, we can, we can hire within our community and say, you manage the kids or you manage the projects or whatever. Um, people have been volunteering like crazy, and that's important. But we need people to manage. And I don't want to not pay them for their genius. So. Um, we don't have to buy the technology, so that's a big, you know, that checks a million dollars off <laughs> the plate. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to have Mark take the the lead, and then we'll start. I'll start sur while you're talking, Mark. I'll start um, surveying the questions, and then really, I'm open to. We we don't know what we're doing. We need the whole room on this. We are literally minute by minute, second by second, trying to hold it together. So. Any of your ideas, any of your thoughts, any of your genius, we need it all. 
and we need it yesterday. So, so Mark, I'll let you take the line and I'll start looking at questions in the chat. Angela, I'll, now I hear echo. Um, oh, Angela, I can ask questions. I have been collecting them from chat. We may have to do tag team microphone. So, um, okay, perfect. That's perfect. Perfect. So just shoot, and then I'll shut up. Are you hearing echoing now? No, when I talk. Perfect. Uh, from what countries can students participate? The world. All over. We want every, we have on the dream team, so we have students from five continents. So we have um, uh, Ghana, we have Puerto Rico, we have Colombia, we have um, we have a, a team of schools from Dubai. So everywhere, every age, every grade level. No exemptions. Any other, any other questions from the group? I'm sorry, I was asking when I turned my mic off. Um, how can folks in one location connect to others with similar interests? Uh, is there a search function on the site? So because we had to, this was a, a, my goal originally with the top coder, and we ran into COPA laws. And so right now we're actively working on the search so that it's a unified search. We are thinking right now, and we're still working on this, um, we have a media company that's helping with a Twitter infrastructure. Um, what we have right now, and, and we need to get directions to everybody, is there is a, is a group um, that has built a special site for the project team. And we can open that up to the whole community. We have special, they've actually built this for Choose to Matter. It's a site called Wigio.com. It's a project management site, a lot like uh, 37 signals. So what we can do is I quite honestly haven't had time to learn the functionality. So either Twitter through the hashtag and, and what we're, we still have to get out. If, I would say right now the best hashtag is Quest to Matter. Um, and we can do that. Um, we'll get a, a note out to everybody on the blog about Wigio and how to get in there. Um, and then what we're working on is the infrastructure part of how do we get people that might have contributed in kid blogs to, to connect with people in your, your sphere because some of the kids' contributions can't be public. And the no-name site, because of the COPA laws, just like on Facebook, if you're 15 and under, you can't. So the key is how do we get the teachers of these kids, not so much right now, the kids connecting, the teachers of these kids connecting, and I'm thinking that Wigio is the best space for that. So we've run into a whole bunch of stuff with, with COPA laws, and, and rightly so. You know, we shouldn't have five-year-olds just randomly out there with somebody connect with me. So I'm actively working on that, and anybody that can help me with that infrastructure, but I'm thinking we have a private Facebook group called, which is not completely effective because, you know, it's, it's hard, but we have a Choose to Matter, um, and Mark, could you send a link to that? There's a Choose to Matter private Facebook group. Um, I'm thinking that Wigio is going to be the best place for teachers, teams of teachers to connect. Um, and it, what's hard is we have so many people wanting to help Skype in the classroom also has a space for Choose to Matter on there to connect via Skype. My goal is to try not to have people connect in 57 places. Unfortunately, that's a really big task to do. It's not undoable, but I'm, I'm any, we almost need a team of you guys to get together and pick a space. And I don't know, Peggy, if it's Classroom 2.0, if we just run a group on Classroom 2.0. I am completely open. I just don't want to make it hard for teachers to connect. And I, I just, it's, this is a massive challenge. So we, have, we actually have too many options right now. And that's our problem. It, um, can you hear me, Angela? Yep, I can hear you perfect, Mark. Okay. Yeah, so I'd say that, the, you, you know, I sent links to two Facebook uh, groups. One is, one is a page, which is sort of our official announcement page where only we're posting. And then the other one is a group. 
where anybody can join and anybody can post that's part of the group. So I think that that's a, an excellent place for you to reach out to each other and say, how is this working for you? What, what could be different? Um, another link that I shared, and it's, it's something that we're just finishing up, so you might want to check it in a little while. A lot of teachers have said we really want to become part of the quest. We really want to help you build this out, you know, especially with the summer coming where people may have a little bit more time. And so I shared a link to a Google Doc with the sorts of things that we're thinking long term for Choose to Matter. You know, we want to provide comprehensive, authoritative, curated content for people. We want students to be able to take effective action and we want to help provide them with the information they need to do it. And so that's one thing we'll be building out. And then also we'll be putting structure behind the mentoring where anybody who wants to do a project can find somebody to help them or give them advice. It might be five minutes of advice. They may become co-partners on the project. Obviously, we need to think a lot about how we do that. We need to make sure that people are, are safe and that nobody's wasting their time. But on the other hand, we want to scale it massively. So we, we have a lot of work to do and we need a lot of help to do it. And so I'll be putting more um, meat on this document. And then we're also going to create like an ambassador program because we know that, you know, you can tweet all day long, but there's nothing like um, a person who will go out and represent Choose to Matter, whether it's just to the colleagues in their school or at a, an assembly or maybe there's a local conference. Um, you know, we think that's the best way to build um, you know, other ambassadors to the Quest to Matter. So we want to talk to people about becoming that. And there'll, there'll, be, there'll be more roles as well that we'll be describing in this document. So just take a quick look at that now and, and know that um, by this afternoon it'll be more complete as well. Thanks, Mark. Um, Peggy or Lorna, can you put a whiteboard? In, I tried to do it and I forgot how. Can you put a whiteboard so, because we're getting a ton of really good ideas in the chat, and if you could in the chat, so maybe we put in what, I don't know how to do, okay, I can't, obviously I'm not talented enough to do this. Um, okay, I'm technology not savvy. If we could put problems, I don't, I guess challenges the same way the kids are. Here's our challenges, and here's what we need. Here's the challenges, here's the genius we need. And even if you guys like are thinking right now, here's a challenge you guys have, when you're in it, you don't even actually know what your challenges are. So if we could put challenges and then we could put solutions and under the solutions put a name of people. So like Jackie was in here and she said, so our challenge is where do we have teachers connect or kids to connect? She said a solution might be Edmodo. And I don't know if she wants, she's just offering that or wanted to step up and say, I'll investigate that so that we know that we're working together as a smart team, as a room, and not having seven people go investigate Edmodo. So our goal is to streamline and make seamless the act of mattering. And I realize how tax teachers are and how it's the end of the year. And so we're trying to figure out how to, and that's what's been the most challenging thing is because a lot of the sites weren't built and we must, you know, we launched a, a lot later than we wanted to because of that. Wherever kids are right now, wherever teachers are, we want to use the technology to be like a plumbing and an aggregator and get it to choose to matter. We have to have a team where we go hand pick stuff from Edmodo or Kid Blog. We can do that so teachers don't have to make that step. But we've got to get the projects that kids are doing and the genius work that's there showcased on the public site because that's the only way it will be it'll get scaled at a world level we want to make that super easy so um one of the problems one of the challenges is i'm not asking you guys to go fundraise or raise money and i would never ask kids but we all have networks we have personal and social networks that you could say to anybody you know is this this is a cup of coffee this is one to five dollars would you give this to this project to help with with our community staff and our kids? The kids did a Google Doc and they're like, well, we want t-shirts and we want like a pizza because we're going to be working a lot of hours. We'd like some ice cream, some really cool braces. And their only really non-negotiable demand was, we really want you to come to our school and wear the blue dress and tell us we matter. 
And I actually had to sign a document saying I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, you're really kidding. And they're like, nope, we're not going to change the world unless you show up and you have to wear the blue dress, which I don't even know if I still have. And so these are minimal amounts of funding. And so I really need help with that. So I'm going to be quiet because I'm sure you have a different question. I have collected a few more questions. Awesome. Go ahead. Um, if students want to submit an idea themselves, I think the slide was already up, and they're in fourth grade, um, the, the slide that had the three major choices, is that what they use? Yes. And these are not limited. So if a child is in fourth grade and falls between the 5 and 14, mm -hmm. and it's an individual child, or a classroom can also do that, if they're on kid blogs, they can already submit it there. It doesn't delete them from kid blogs. Or they can go to Yearspear, and in Yearspear, the kids have to set up a profile according to their birthday. There's a mm -hmm. search functionality in your sphere. There's only a tagging functionality in kid blogs because there's no independent identity. So mm -hmm. there's a tagging that says all the projects that kids are blogging about, either individual blogs or class blogs, will have a tag choose to matter. So they'll sort them that way. But it will not connect. Um, and maybe there's a thing to connect grades of choose to matter. I think there's co kids for comments and quad blogging. But what your sphere does is they, the kids have to actually set up a profile by, by their birthday. So they would say it would prove that I'm 14 or that I'm 13. And the kids would be able to reach out to each other to sort and search each other individually or as a class. And that's what your sphere does differently than kid blogs. It doesn't matter to me. I'm trying to make it easy for every kind of contribution. I think sure. it's very important that kids start building and owning their genius and identity and start putting their profile because that's preparation for the world. That's how this has all happened. It's because of my digital profile. It's because of my network that I was able in a very small action to get something at this level accomplished. If I would have hidden my identity online and I wouldn't have had the ability to reach out to other people, we wouldn't have got this done. So I want to build in your sphere that same capacity, but in a privatized way. So that's why if an individual child, they would actually put their first and last name in and their birthday. That is not public. That doesn't go to Facebook. That is a private, protected, only 5 to 14 year old get to interact in that space. No adults can join. I mean, they can join, but like no like Facebook creepy people will get in there. So, Thank you. Um, how can a teacher get the, the school on board? That is a fantastic question. That is one of our challenges. How do we get, so I've been tweeting every leader I know. I've been tweeting like crazy and I, I don't know how to get schools on board. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, I, I'm going to be at, at Camp Philly this weekend, and I'm going to be talking on Wednesday to about 80 tech directors in the state of New York. So I am trying to present at every conference I know, at every, and um, I don't know how to get schools on board. I know how to get our network, but I, any ideas in that, if I have to Skype into a school, I only have so much bandwidth, but mm -hmm. if I have to Skype into a school, if I have, what I thought about is I would do a, like a Skype message. I would do like a little message to schools, like a videotape, which I hate, but I would do it, um, and then send that out. We did um, Google Hangouts with our partners, so we have a Google Hangout with Biff, we have a Google Hangout with Fable Vision, we have a Google Hangout with Huffington um, that shows how they're supporting. So we have a ton of content on the Choose to Matter blog. And anything that you need, like we were thinking of, maybe together we could create like a little handbook or package. Anything that you think we need to do or you could help us do to get the message out, I just, we, me and Mark, don't have the bandwidth to, to, to make calls all day. So mm -hmm. any ideas, totally. 
Thanks. Those are all the ones that I saw. So I know she's going to kill me, but I know Karen's in the room. And I would love her to take the mic because I think what's really important is that, or anybody that participated in Dot Day or that's been any part of this, I think it's really important that you understand from a kid's perspective what this has meant to kids. And, I've, and I know that you, you know every day what it feels like for kids to matter, what it's been like for kids to have people in the world, world acknowledge what they're doing. It's, it's extraordinary. And I can explain that and I can blog about that, but Karen's lived this this year. Her kids' messages, her kids' projects have been in several of the videos that have been shared, and they've been really significant in helping some of the bulletin boards that you see here from Karen. So I know she's going to hate me, but she knows I love her. Karen, would you take the mic and just share what this has been like, this journey of, of your kids and you matter and choose to matter, and being able to see that their, their actions have actually helped inspire other kids' actions because she's, she's allowed me to share the bulletin boards and the pictures and the, the messages and stuff that they've been doing. So Karen, will you take the mic and everybody give her some clap and love because she's probably killing me right now. Karen, you have mic access. So if you wanted to go ahead, do you have uh, permission to use the mic? I think she's working on the audio right now. Okay. So while she's working on the audio, if you are available as a teacher or, or some, I really think that I can stay on after or okay, that, we sorry. Can meet, that we can meet to see if you have any bandwidth to help in any way be on our dream team as well, even if it's temporary, a week, two weeks to get especially this next week for the launch. I think Karen's maybe ready. So Karen has the mic access, and I made the wrong Karen a few minutes ago. If you're hear, hearing us, oh, now she's running your wizard. So go ahead. Anyone else wants to come to the mic and just raise your hand? I didn't tell you which one that one is, but I think it's obvious. If you want to use the mic, just go ahead and click on it, and I'll give you mic access. Yes, I would love Steve to take the mic. I have not been able to connect with him, so if he's in the room, I'd love him to take the mic. Just to hear his voice, it calms me down. I don't know that my voice really does anything to add to this conversation, but I'm really excited to hear what you're doing. I know it's a lot to take in in one session, so as you're thinking on this, Steve, anyway, um, you know what, I forgot to put Classroom 2.0 on our partners page, and I'm so sorry. I just saw that a second ago, so I'm fixing that. But any way that through the Nings, is that a good place to get some of this information out? Like what somebody put in the chat, be willing to meet people where they are and add, and that's absolutely critical for me to do um, and make it super simple to get them here. Um, and I know it's a lot of pieces. It's overwhelming. You know, I'll have to look at it, but I'm glad to do so. And I am sorry I've been so hard to get a hold of. This is the kind of thing I'd love to help you with. So I'll, I'll take it as homework. That's perfect. Karen, are you ready? Yeah, I'm here. Um, good morning, my friend. Um, can you hear me OK? OK, great. Thanks, Peggy. Um, I you know, started using the, the You Matter and the I Matter chant with my kids last year and they really, they just took off with it and would start uh, doing the chant, the I Matter, um, I Matter and uh, how would you do it, I Matter, I am a genius and then I am a genius and the world needs my contribution and we would just, 
we would chant that at the end of the day as our um, uh, ending prayer for the day. We're a Catholic school, and they really just, I mean, they loved doing it, and I, it always gave me chills to hear them saying that. Um, but more, more importantly, they believed it, and I think that um, if, if nothing else, if they left my classroom um, and leave my school with the idea that, you know, they know they matter to the world, not just to me um, or their parents or the school, then, um, you know, my, my, my job was, was well done, um, no matter if they learned who wrote the Constitution or who signed the Declaration. Um, it was more important to me that they knew that there's something in them that they need to share with the world. And that's why we started doing the um, the bulletin boards. So it's a constant reminder that not, you know not only do they matter, that they have to make um, their contribution to the world, that they have to um, go out there and make a difference. Um, in fact, that's our, 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 our um, parishes theme is to, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm forgetting how it goes, but part of it is to make a difference in the world. And um, we're, we're constantly reminded just every day when we look at our Choose to Matter board. You know, we started with the, um, the first board of the year was how they choose to matter amongst their family and friends. And then the next thing we did was a research project where they had to find something um, that they were interested in, um, like an organization or a charity of some sort that they could support. And you know, it had, had something to do with what they felt passionate about. Um, and that board is still hanging because I, I love looking at it every day. But um, we, we did the heart mapping activity earlier in the year. But I love your idea of the um, the heart heartbreak mapping. We have to do that this week. Um, we have to do that before the end of the year, so they can uh, start thinking about something for next year. Um, so that's uh, basically what we've been doing. I'm I'm sure there's more to it, but um, I don't know. My my mind is uh, is is half asleep this morning, so. Love you, my dear. I love the work you're doing, and um, whatever you need from me, just let me know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Karen and Angela. Angela, I just uh, I don't want to lose some of this momentum, but yeah. I know some people have to, to leave it. Yeah. I'd like to close out the show. I think Lori didn't have any more questions, but I know people might want to have a chance to share, and I don't want to miss Denise in a few minutes, but I would like to show, I'll uh, close out the show, and then we'll come back for more questions, okay? So I want to give you a heads up for next week. Um, Steve has, in Future of Education has quite a few shows lined up for you on the 21st of May, Tuesday. He has Ernie Turner and Simona David on Engaging School Communities One at a Time. Then the 23rd, the Thursday, Will Richardson on Why School. Uh, May 30th, we're going to have Franz Johansson on The Click Moment. And finishing off on the 4th of June, Joan Winkle on student entrepreneurship and the real flipped learning. So we've got some great shows. Looking forward to uh, joining Steve with that on the future of education and our own shows. Um, in a minute, we're going to have uh, Denise Krebs, I think, uh, come to the mic and give us some background. Genius Hour has come up a lot in the conversation today. And so we've got a great spin-off here to introduce you to that concept and how it's going to unfold. Then on the 25th, we won't have it be having a show with Memorial Day holiday weekend. And June 1st, we're going to have Tammy Moore with Adobe Captivate. And Tammy, can you come to the mic just for a second? Because I think people could be a little confused about Adobe Connect and Adobe Captivate. I'm just going to turn the mic over to Tammy for a second, if that's okay. That's okay. I guess the main thing, last week it was mentioned it was a competitor of Collaborate, but it's not. It's not a webinar product. What it is, is it's a tool that allows you to make interactive content for computers and mobile devices. So if you love making lessons for your students and you love making them game-like and interactive, then that's the tool that I'm recommending to you. And I'm going to show you a little bit about it next week, or not next week, but on June 1st. Thanks very much, Tammy. 
Uh, just a reminder about nominations for the featured teacher. A lot of you have been doing that so far. We have a great collection of people coming out of the chat. There's the URL for the link to the uh, survey form. And remember, it's in the live binder if you can't get that link uh, rather quickly. And I'm going to move on to when you close out the session. If you haven't seen this before, you're going to get a pop-up window with the survey. Please take a minute to give us some feedback and ideas. and. Uh, Again, that link for the survey, if it doesn't open up, you'll find in our live binder. And I know Peggy you're probably going to drop that link in for us because people can request a certificate of participation. Peggy faithfully each week sends one out for you to use. And there's a spot on the survey for you to request uh, the certificate of participation. So again, um, yes, any certificate from today. And I'm forgetting that certificates are available for people who have actually watched a recording as well. So they can submit uh, a request for the certificate for a previous show. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel with video and audio collection. Uh, that's the URL. Again, the URL and link to our uh, YouTube uh, resources you'll find in the live binder. Uh, some of you may not know that we do have an RSS feed for that resources and archive page that you can uh, collect that into your feed reader. Weekly, you'll be able to catch up on the show if you miss it. Uh, a special thanks. I'm giving you a, a shout out here, not only to Angela, Mark, and Karen for sharing today. Steve has been our uh, resource and founder and moral supporter through Classroom 2.0. And I'm very happy to hear that Steve's going to take up some homework there to uh, assist Angela and her crew in promoting uh, Quest to Matter. You'll also find Steve at Teacher 2, Future of Education and Web 2.0 Labs project. We send a thank you always to Weebly for providing support for our website. And for all of you who turn up on Saturday mornings, again, thank you very much for being with us today. I am going to give Angela the mic if she'd like to come back and uh, have some more conversation. But for that, I say thank you to anyone who can't be with us for the rest of the show. We look forward to seeing you next week as well. So Angela, you are going to speak to Denise. Is that right? So Lorna, first I want to I want everybody to give a big clap and hands to Steve, Lorna, and Peggy. I would not not only be here today, I wouldn't be here in general. They are absolutely just a core support and I'm, they are so dear to not only me but to this community. What they contribute to help us be better and stronger and smarter is invaluable. So if we could just give a big smiley face, a round of clapping to our beautiful hosts and supporters. We couldn't do this without them. So thank you. I actually um, am going to stay on. Is I don't know if Denise, I just talked to her on Twitter. I don't know if she's coming. I don't want to disrupt what they're doing for Genius Hour. So if they need me there, but I want to stay on here. If you have to leave, that's okay. I also put my email in. And I want to get for in, any ideas, because I know obviously this is a lot to process. <laughs> and I've been living it for a solid year every minute. So it, I'm sure in an hour it seems Right, Angela, I think Denise is ready to come to the mic. She's with us. So oh. Denise, uh, your microphone is active and ready for you to go ahead. OK. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I am here. And I, I guess um, I'll just say quickly that I'm looking forward to talking about Genius Hour next week, the way um, that we are helping children to um, again, remember how to learn to love learning and make choices and contribute their genius. Um, I guess even when they don't believe it yet or they've forgotten. So we'll look forward to talking more next week. And Angela, I'm um, so happy you came into my life. I absolutely love you. Denise was one of my graduate students and to watch one of your students grow into a leadership role and to watch her emerge and take this idea and, and rally the community, it, it just, it's beyond words. I love you. I'm so proud of all of you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Angela. I think we've got to the top of the hour. Lori said she didn't have any more questions. I'm going to suggest, can you type in your email address if someone needs to contact you later? Because I don't think we have your contact info here or your Twitter idea so that people could still continue the conversation at the end of the show. OK, great. She's got her Twitter idea. And I just is there someone else that would like to share and come to the mic? If you just let us know, then um, We'll give you mic privileges. So I'm not seeing yeah, anyone. I have just one more. Sure. Jolie, are you still in the room? I would absolutely love Jolie just to take the mic if, if she hasn't left the room, just really quick. Jordy Barker is still there. I just gave her mic access. You may have surprised her and she's not ready to talk, so <laughs> she's going to type an answer. She's just checking her mic, so I'll give her a second. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Oh, fantastic. Okay, yeah, I was um, processing. <laughs> I was sitting here thinking about all of this. It's a huge project, but it's so worthy. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, platforms that we can connect to, and I'm trying to think of ways that we can make this, uh, you know, really streamlined. Um, you know, schools schools can go, you know, whole campus with this, whole district with this. So we've got to figure out a way to um, spread this word in a really effective. Uh, streamlined way. I think that's the, the whole issue. Should we start with, um, like even if we don't like Wigio or I, I don't know if it started a stream on Classroom 2.0 since people are familiar with that, we just start a group. Maybe that's the easiest because we already have a group on Classroom 2.0. We'll just open another group on the Wiki and at least start the conversation there because if people are familiar with it and then if we have to go into different places we can. But what do you think about that as the solution? Just open a group, introduce ourselves there and just work from a group from the Classroom 2.0 name. I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, I, I was, I don't know what the connection um, with ePals or anything like that might be, but you know, they already have connections to teachers worldwide on their site. Um, that you know post just their own collaborative uh, projects already, and they have a work a wiki space, workspace, and a blogging area, and you could click on choose to matter and connect that way too. I don't know if there's a conflict of interest there or not, but um, if there's not, I could always talk to them about that too, because that's a way to get worldwide recognition pretty quickly. That's actually a great idea. Karen just brought up something that um, we need to make sure we connect this to the standards. So this is it's easier to connect what standards doesn't it get because it's digital literacy, digital citizenship, project-based learning, deep learning, all of that. So Jolie, can you just share what it's been like for your kids because you also, like Karen, I, I've been using a lot of the stuff your kids have done in the presentations to show what it means to kids and I just shared your that you know, everybody's saying, is this a millennial generation? Is this generation what? And you're like, this is generation genius, G-E-N slash I-U-S, and that's brilliant. So say a few words about that, and then um, we can figure out the next way for all of us to connect. Sure. Um, well, actually, we were talking, uh, uh, once I got your Habitudes book, I really just um, ran with it, and um, it fell in, a, in alignment with the whole Fearless Classroom um, idea also, and my kids and I were talking about how everything we learn contributes to how we can affect change in the lives of other people, even if it's just one person, that's a, a contribution that we have to tackle. And um, somehow we were on the conversation about how um, different generations were given names like baby boomers and the hippies and all that. And one of my kids just very 
brilliantly spoke up and said, we could be generation, gen, I, us. And I said, what do you mean by that? And they said, well, it's not about I anymore. It's about the us for us because we want everyone to get along. And they're really big about stopping bullying. So um, that's kind of the big passion with the class that I have this year. So they wanted everyone to sort of come together and get along. So they were always talking about the us factor. And um, then one of the other kids said, oh, my goodness, that spells genius. It's Gen I us, genius. It's perfect. So I threw that out on Twitter and thought it was pretty cool that they came up with that. But um, you know, these are second graders. And I've always said, um, you know, just a couple of years ago, we were doing projects with uh, the Smithsonian Classroom and the Siemens We Can Change the World Challenge. And um, to have a child at seven years old realize that their voice not only matters, but at, even at seven can affect change is such um, a priceless gift beyond any standard, beyond any curriculum that we can offer them, that is the, a gift that will keep on giving for the rest of their lives. I mean, the fact that they feel that they have a voice that's strong enough and loud enough to affect change even at seven is just, you know, it's remarkable. Carrie has a question. I'm going to give her mic access. So if you want to go ahead, Carrie. Not actually a question, but um, Angela, we spoke yesterday about some options. and. I think there's a great opportunity that I can help you with. Um, I've been creating online communities for over 10 years. And one of the things I was just thinking about is that we can create a community with discussion areas for um, the different levels, for different grades, for classes, and then add something that um, becomes of more interest. We can actually snap it out and give it its own private section where they would be able to continue conversation, post resources, um, and we can control all of it. And one of the things that I like about creating your own private online community is that you're not, I leverage all the Web 2.0 tools, but I'm also very leery sometimes of putting kids' content on something that may or you do not have control over and you never know if some of these Web 2.0 tools are going to just die in the middle of using them. That's happened to us all before, I'm sure. Um, but by controlling our own environment, it gives you the control over what's being shared and you kind of have access to everything. You don't have to worry about anything getting into the wrong hands. And I'd be happy to help you with setting that up. That so rocks. Um, so as these questions and ideas are tossed around in, in the brainstorming, the two big things that I want to immediately think about is, because I know that Denise and the Genius Hour teachers have this massive wiki with all these kids' projects. So. We don't want to make extra work. We want to be able to help. The key is getting, and so it's twofold because we want to keep our conversation as educators and as kids in a place that we're already at, that we're comfortable with. But there has to be a process, at least for the quest, to get the projects we've been working on. How do we get the Genius Hour projects on the main site? And how do we do that? How can we help you get that done? Because the key is they're only being noticed by us right now. The game-changing part is the world and web community are waiting for these contributions. And they're not only waiting to validate them, they're waiting to help our kids scale them and our teachers scale them. So Dwala is a, uh, a site that right now is um, partnering with Reddit and like Ashton Kutcher and, and Facebook, and they are in Iowa. So they're, um, and they're uh, like a PayPal kind of site. So I met with the CEO of Dwala this week, and he's like, I had no idea you were doing this. Dwala wants to support education. They're working with the lieutenant governor. But I had no idea that, that this was. So we have companies, we have brands, we have major places that want to showcase. So if we keep all of our stuff on our own site, so I feel like our own site should be to talk. But we've got to find a way to get from our own site on this main site so the world can really, really help us scale what it is we're trying to do inside. So I'm not sure we have, have the answer right at the moment. 
Can I uh, let Stephanie have access to go ahead? I think she has a comment or a question for you, Angela. So Absolutely. she has a mic access. Go ahead, Stephanie. So Steph All right. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go okay. ahead. Um, I'm, I'm a teacher in Iowa, and I wanted to share an idea and then something I did in my classroom. Um, after reading Angela's Habitude books, I created a slideshow about, um, with my first graders, what is a genius? And I had in, uh, incorporated pictures of them. Um, so as they talked about what is a genius, I wanted to relate it to the things that we were doing in our classroom. And when um, one of my students saw a picture of himself, he kind of whispered to another student, oh, I'm not a genius, I'm not very smart. And then the little boy was, oh, yes, you are, yes, you are. And as we continued on with our lessons over the next couple of days and talking about our genius, he just transformed into a very different child. And I just saw how powerful, I mean, I, I felt um, that this was going to be very powerful, but I was actually able to see it with, you know, five and six year olds. And so I started incorporating other literature, Mr. Peabody's Apples, um, that's retold by Madonna. And we talk about how powerful our words and our actions are every day in our classroom. And we incorporate um, the, you know, are you a bucket dipper, are you a bucket filler uh, books, the Heart Prints by P.K. Hallinan. So I think one link or connect for teachers is looking at the literature that's out there that we can use with our students to um, help them see it in the classroom and then take it outside the classroom. And then where I would like to go next is then how to take that globally. So I think if we can share these ideas on our Facebook pages or our emails or our newsletters with parents also and be very specific on the things that we're doing in our classroom, that's a, another little link to get it out there and get the message out there. That is awesome, Stephanie. And I got to see her this week, so I feel very lucky, two times in one week. Yes, yay. <laughs> Um, but I really, I really think that as a teacher, I feel slightly lost. Okay, what do I do next? So I think a platform where we can talk as educators of how, what else can we do? Um, how can we connect with other people that feel strong, as strongly as we do on these things? When you're in a big district or a small district and you don't feel like you have those connections, with other people who want to do the same things. I think as educators, that's what we need is a place to connect and then take it bigger. That is awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, so many genius ideas in the chat. So maybe one of the really important things to communicate is the quest is different than choose to matter. The quest is simply to bring attention to what our schools are doing with the potential to scale and, and get acknowledgement for some of the ideas that are already there. Because it launched a little bit later, we're not even asking for new quests. The quests are not, so if you think of like the quest as Shark Tank, it really is. You don't have your finished product, you have your idea. Like, here's how I'm going to change the world. And you have 400 members of the communities that actually are changing the world right now, acting as not just a Shark Tank, but acting as mentors. So we have to get our kids' ideas out there so that they can sort of be pitched to the world, if you will. What happens with Choose to Matter after that is completely organic and up to our community how we want to use it. And I think the long-term potential of this central platform to connect teachers, to connect through whatever medium, it's endless and it's not, it's not even stressful, it's joyful because we get to build it to be whatever we need it to be. But the short-term urgency is because we have these business partners, the Huffington, the Business Innovation Factory, the leadership community, the talent community, and, and the BAMI saying, okay, show us what you've been talking about. Show us how awesome your kids are. You keep saying they're awesome. Show us. So we have this window of, of opportunity in the next six weeks to show them and to really bring attention then from that point on to whatever we need to do. So there's this. Someone said, like, go to student councils. Well, that's, that's brilliant. Like, how do we get, even parents, I didn't even tap into parents. Like, parents might know something their kid is doing offline. 
and said, like, well, this, you know, Kevin Honeycutt's a little different kind of parent, but he said, Angela, i got to show you what my kid Ben is doing. He's changing the world. So he sent me Ben's project. I'm like, he needs to contribute that to the quest. So I think the urgent problem to solve is how do we get schools and let teachers know you don't have to do anything the last two weeks of school. We know it's the last two weeks of school. What you need to do is tell me what your kids have been doing genius-wise all year or tell me one individual and get that in some form to the quest. And then after the quest, we can do whatever we want with the movement. It's our movement. It's us. I don't really care where it goes as long as it serves the mission of changing the world and changing lives. Thank you, Angela. I, I think you, we have started something. It's still got a lot of momentum. It really is moving. And I think you, in the next little while, people are going to challenge. But you have some great support in the chat with all kinds of great ideas to go from. We are getting close to the half hour. And I know some people have left us already. We always have the concern about the length of the recording. So I don't want to limit anyone uh, taking advantage of this. So I am going to close out the show now. And again, you, you put in your Twitter ID. And people People can continue the conversations. I think the idea of having a group on Classroom 2.0 is a tremendous start as well. So thank you very much, everyone, for being with us today. Angela, all the contributors, uh, we really appreciate your passions and motivations that push us all forward. Uh, have a great Saturday. And uh, we'll see, hopefully, everyone next week to talk about genius. Have a good day. <laughs>